Have you ever wondered if you can make progress faster after your stroke? Hi, I'm Elise. I hold a clinical doctorate in occupational therapy, and I'm also a certified stroke rehab specialist. By the end of today's video, you'll know what activities will help you make progress faster, how this physiologically happens, and I'm gonna give you some practical tips to help your brain rewire faster after a stroke. After a stroke, your brain and body have to relearn how to move and to think again. And it does this through an amazing process called neuroplasticity. And if that term is new to you, it's basically our brain's ability to adapt, rewire and reorganize in response to doing things. And this is present across our lifetimes, but it's especially important after a brain injury, like a stroke. It allows the brain to form new pathways or even patch up and repair ones that were damaged during your stroke. And here's the really amazing part. Every time that you use your affected side or your affected abilities, let's say doing something like buttoning a shirt, washing your hair or standing up from a chair, your brain is firing neurons together. And when neurons fire together, they wire together. And that's why these everyday activities are so powerful and will help your brain rewire faster. They're not random movement. They're activities that are meaningful to you. They're salient to you, important to you. And this helps to amplify the brain's learning response. When you perform an activity that matters, your brain releases neurochemicals. And these neurochemicals act like fertilizer for your brain, for your neurons. They help new connections grow, strengthen existing ones, and reorganize pathways in your brain to make it more efficient. Let's talk about this from a physiological standpoint and how the principles of neuroplasticity affect your brain. So I've been talking about salience, doing things that are meaningful to you. The brain pays more attention to tasks that feel important or that you have an emotional attachment to. For example, you probably find it more meaningful to fold your child's clothing than to fold towels in a therapy gym. Specificity. Your brain is going to get better at what you specifically practice. For example, if you practice holding a utensil and eating with your affected hand, you are going to get better at that over time because it's not some random movement. It's a very specific thing you're doing to improve that brain-body connection. Repetition, something I talk a lot about. Every repetition solidifies those neural pathways in place and it makes that signal smoother and faster the more that you do it. Intensity, we can't have repetition alone. There has to be intensity along with the repetition. The harder that you focus, the stronger the signal to your brain. The brain responds to challenges and it rewires more effectively when you are engaged with higher intensity. And of course, the two principles of neuroplasticity that you've probably heard before. Use it to improve it. The more you use it, the stronger and more automatic those connections become. And of course, use it or lose it. If you avoid using your affected side and your affected abilities, your brain will prune away those pathways and you will lose the ability to use those functions. So it's not just about doing more therapy to see more progress because that can run into its own problems like fatigue and burnout, but rather using the everyday things that you already do to help you make progress faster. Of course, I wanna note that exercises are incredibly important to do as well. You are not going to be able to get 300 repetitions of shoulder flexion, for example, by washing your hair, right? You need to do isolated exercises in order to get that level of repetition in. So I'm not saying any of this to discount exercise, but rather to show the incredible importance that everyday activities play in speeding up your recovery. Now that we understand that everyday activities can help us speed up recovery via the principles of neuroplasticity, I want to break down some everyday activities to further cement and help you understand why this works. And this is gonna give you a little insight into my therapist's brain. This is how most therapists are thinking about everyday activities in the context of rehab. So for example, let's think about cooking a meal. If you are standing up at the kitchen counter, this requires some level of balance, coordination, and proprioception, your ability to understand 
where your body is in space. You may need to reach into a cabinet. You may have to stabilize a bowl and mix with the other one. You also have to cognitively be able to pay attention to what you're doing, understand safety in the kitchen, and be able to sequence through, meaning you're able to go from step one of a recipe to the finished product. So it requires a lot of different aspects from physical to cognition in order to be able to cook a meal. When you're getting dressed, you have to be able to have bilateral coordination, AKA moving your two sides together. You have to have some range of movement to be able to put on a shirt or reach down and put on your pants. You need to have good proprioception, understanding where your body is in space. And for small things, you need to have fine motor coordination, being able to button a button or zip a zipper. When you're brushing your teeth, you need to have some level of grasp to be able to hold the toothbrush and movement to go back and forth and actually brush your teeth. You have to have some level of grip strength to squeeze out toothpaste. And if you're doing this standing up, good balance and coordination. And lastly, let's say you need to walk to get the mail. Well, depending on how far away your mailbox is, that requires a certain level of endurance. It requires the ability to go over different surfaces. Whereas you may only have carpet or hardwood or laminate in your house, you may be going over grass and concrete that's very uneven when you walk outside. So when you break down everyday activities like this and understand all of these underlying components that make them possible, you can see how you're getting in all of these extra movements, this thinking process, extra cognition that you're having to work on, and so when you're engaging in these types of things on a daily basis, you can see how your brain is working to reorganize, reconnect, or create new pathways in order for you to be able to do these things again. They are repeated and they require multiple body systems at once. And that's what makes them such a potent driver of creating faster recovery. Now you could just start doing more everyday activities, trying to do them more independently for yourself, and you are probably gonna see some faster recovery. But I want to give you some very practical tips on how to get more bang for your buck and make that progress even faster. And the first thing is to be intentional. If you have the time, don't rush through these activities. Really focus on making the most of your affected side or whatever affected abilities you're trying to improve. The second is to engage your senses. And this goes along with number one, you really want to be focused in and be paying attention. So let's say for example, when you're getting dressed, pay attention to how things feel. What different textures are you noticing? Really pay attention to your weight shifts, your balance, how your body feels, and really hone in on control and movement. Number three, Repeat these activities as often as you can. While repetition alone is not enough, every repetition that you do is a signal to the brain that says, hey, strengthen those connections. Let's prioritize this. And let's take the example of trying to shower independently. This is something that a lot of stroke survivors deal with when they come home from the hospital after having a stroke is, not being able to take a shower independently. Now, of course, always get the adaptive equipment that you need to make it safe for you or have someone else in the room with you if this is something that you wanna practice, but you are only going to get better at the thing if you do the thing. So if showering independently is important to you, do as much as you can on your own. If you need someone to step in and help you, that's okay. If you need to use adaptive equipment, that's okay but do what you can on your own as much as possible because the more that you repeat that, the more you're strengthening those pathways and you're telling your brain, let's prioritize that they are trying to do this by themselves again. And lastly, think like a therapist. Increase the challenge with your daily activities. Now, it's not that you're going to do your everyday activities like this all the time or once you get movement back. But if you can create small challenges for yourself throughout the day, this is going to stimulate your brain to respond more. So for example, if you're starting to brush your teeth independently, move your toothbrush back so that you have to reach farther to get it. 
If it's safe for you to do so, practice standing at the kitchen counter and take one hand off and see how you do. Adding these small challenges into your everyday activities will pay off in the end. At the end of the day, here's what I really want you to take away from this. You don't need hours of using fancy equipment at a therapy gym to make progress faster. You just need intentional, meaningful, challenging repetitions. And it's what's going to help you make progress significantly faster than if you relied on one or two formal therapy sessions a week. Leave me a comment and let me know what daily activities do you use as part of your home rehab program. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, click the join button to become a channel member, or leave us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below. And of course, a huge thank you to all of the donors who make this nonprofit possible with a special thank you to Ryan D, Modus Nova, and Joseph M in our Empower tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.